Recently, Terraria mods have started becoming insanely good, and the Orchid mod which I've been working on for the past 5 years is becoming obsolete. It is about time for me to start reworking it, and catch up with what's being done today. This is a more laid-back video than what I've been doing so far. I will be covering most of the changes I've made to the Shaman class up to the Wall of Flesh. The goal is to explain the design decisions that led to items being tweaked, new sprites, and visual overhauls for a lot of projectiles that aged badly. If you're unfamiliar with the Shaman class, here's a very quick summary. Shaman uses 5 weapon types, all tied to an element. Fire, Water, Air, Earth and Spirit. Hitting with a specific element fills a resource. When it's full, the player can right-click to release an element and activate a bond. When released, a weapon will keep attacking with the player like a summoner minion, and the player cannot use it or weapons of the same element anymore. Releasing elements can trigger specific effects, and Shaman weapons efficiency often increase with the number of active bonds. I heavily suggest checking out the first video I made on this channel, explaining how I reworked it entirely. The most widespread weapon type for the early game Shaman are Gemstone Scepters. They are crafted in a similar manner to Gemstone Staves, and the Shaman's equivalent to them. They used to be from the now removed Orb Weapon category, meaning the player had to hit 3 times in order for them to trigger their effects, which in this case was a buff to the player depending on the Gemstone. Their attack pattern is fine, but I will rework it slightly to look and feel better to use. I replaced their obscure buffs with a longer lasting Catalyst Summon once released. At this point in the game, the player has little to no gear increasing bond duration, and this will help with keeping them out so it's possible to start experimenting with the mechanics of the class. The Ember Scepter also gives the player some health on release. I've always been confused at the Mage class Ember Staff being worse than the Diamond Staff despite being arguably harder to acquire, and I think this is a good trade-off for making this weapon a little more unique without increasing its damage. Second is the Ancient Scepter. It is found in gold chests in the underground. Note that Orchid mod items will always spawn in the second slot of a chest, pushing the rest of the items one slot to the right. This ensures maximum modding compatibility, especially combined with mods that add a lot of chest loot. Every item is also granted to spawn at least once per world, alleviating frustration in places like the dungeon and sky island, where the item you want could be missing if you're unlucky. Back to the Ancient Scepter. It is a fire weapon that shoots a simple projectile, increasing its damage based on the number of active bonds. This is a bit weird since early game shamans have no way of building up multiple bonds, so I increased its base damage and made the projectile bounce to a second nearby enemy if the player has at least one active bond. If no enemies are nearby, the projectile will hit the same target twice. Every shaman weapon requiring a certain number of bonds to trigger specific behaviors will count towards itself after being released. For example, the Enchanted Scepter Catalyst projectiles will always hit twice when shot from the passive catalyst. This is because the catalyst is spawned by releasing a fire bond with the weapon. Not only is this more interesting, but the weapon is now a better tool at early game exploration, and its dual target effect is a lot easier to benefit from than its previous scaling. This makes it a very good weapon for the Eye of Tulu fight in particular, where it can easily be coupled with a gemstone scepter. The projectile will hit the boss twice while it is alone, and help with clearing the servants otherwise. A counterpart is the Avalanche Scepter, which I'm gonna rename Avalanche. It fires a short-range ice projectile, and has a knob weapon effect while it shoots an ice cycle forward after 10 hits. I improved the weapon's visuals and made it shoot faster. Orb weapons were removed, so I'm simply gonna change it so it shoots that big ice cycle towards the cursor upon releasing a bond. It remains a good early game weapon, and a good choice for players looking for a water weapon. The Vial Spout and the Spine Scepter are both fire weapons that can be crafted with Demonite and Crimtain bars respectively. They fire a short-ranged beam that pierces up to 5 targets, and their range increases with the number of active bonds. These two are granted fire weapons, as unlike the Enchanted Scepter, you don't need to find them in a chest and can craft them after defeating the Eye of Tulu. They are meant to help with the Eater of Ward and Brain of Tulu fights by providing multi-target damage, but damn that projectile aged. I'm going to rework them entirely. The Evil Biome is a point in the game where the player should have decent gear, and will be able to keep two active bonds at least for some time. The Scepters now shoot a single projectile that will bounce on three or five nearby targets if one or two bonds are active. The weapon feels a lot more modern, and is still a great asset to fight Eater of World segments or creepers from the Brain of Tulu. Our next item is the Hive, a drop from the Queen Bee and a Water Element Orb weapon that will summon a swarm of bees after a number of hits. I remade its sprite, which was starting to get pretty old. I didn't change how the weapon behaves. B. I didn't change how the weapon behaves, simply improved its visuals and moved the bees to its bond release effect. It also gives the player a honey buff when hit by its projectiles, making it a good exploration item and a solid first weapon option in the shaman's rotation. Arriving near the end is the spore color. 
This one fires lingering spores that get stronger with time, and will harm onto nearby enemies. It's an item I tried reworking a lot of times, and no matter what always felt very bad to use. I made it shoot very inaccurate spores that do not harm in on enemies anymore. This changes when its bond is released, as all existing spores will suddenly start homing. I hope this is a good middle ground. I still like the feel of spores homing all at once into nearby targets for heavy damage, but the weapon was barely usable, and this solution should provide the best of both worlds. Finally, here is Bloom. This one is an uncommon drop from Dark Casters in the dungeon, and is obviously tied to the water element. Ok, so when I said that some of my items aged poorly, I wasn't lying. This is one of the first weapons I've ever made, and it actually uses the Sapphire Staff projectile. I'm genuinely ashamed this has been in the mod for so long. I reworked the projectile visuals while keeping it identical in behavior. Its use time decreases, meaning the weapon shoots faster with the number of active bonds. Since the player cannot realistically have more than 2 at this point in the game, I made it so it shoots twice as fast when 2 bonds are active, which is more satisfying than a linear increase. This is a great weapon to use last in a rotation, and we provide strong single target DPS. I left aside some less interesting weapon changes so this wouldn't last too long. Shaman accessories are very unique in how they behave. The class's unique mechanics allow them to have interesting effects that no other class could mimic in a balanced manner. A good example of this is the waxy incense. It used to allow the player to continuously release bees when under the effect of a shamanic earth bond. While this is perfectly fine, I change it to summon bees anytime a fire bond is released, making it more in tune with the new shaman mechanics. Next up is the Undyne tier. Its sole effect was to increase shamanic critical strike chance by 10% while a water bond was active. I said in my shaman rework video that water accessories and armor effects should be tied to healing now, and as such, the Undyne tier will instead give the player 30 HP when a water bond is released. While this sounds a bit weak, it can be combined at a Tinkerer's workshop with the Waxy Incense, creating the Waxy tier. A powerful accessory, healing the player and summoning bees anytime they release a fire or water bond. Some items such as the Harpy Anklet and the Deep Forest Charm have received well-needed respites but no gameplay changes. Treasured Bubbles, which is an uncommon drop from Undead Miners used to help with orb weapons. Since those do not exist anymore, the accessory now increases the speed at which shamanic bonds are filled when attacking enemies. I slightly changed the Shaman Sigil's sprites. They can still be obtained from enemies in their respective biomes, and will add a debuff to all shamanic attacks while a fire bond is active. I'm thinking of allowing the player to combine them into a single accessory. The Shaman class has a collection of idol accessories that can be crafted with various gems. They used to give arbitrary stats when their corresponding bond was active, with the outliers, diamond and umber idols increasing bond duration and max health when an earth bond was active. I'm gonna keep the diamond idol as is because bond duration is very valuable. The Ember Idol now gives health regeneration instead of max health, which was hard to benefit from. All the others have been reworked to increase the damage of their respective bond catalyst by 20% after being released. For example, the Ruby Idol will affect the damage of fire bonds. This will make them useful to early game shamans, as they should allow more comfortable rotations using specific weapons and shouldn't compete with other accessories filling their slots too much at this point of the game. Shamans also have a tiara for each gemstone, and I'll use this opportunity to transition into the last section of this video, Shaman Armor. Tiaras used to give a set bonus when used with a magic robe. This was when shaman used mana, and the set bonus has been removed entirely since. I gave them a two different set bonus when used with any ore, chainmail and graves of the same type. While this is not much, a tiny bit of consistency shouldn't hurt. They all increase the duration of shaman bonds by 3 seconds, and increase the damage of their respective elements resist bonds by 20%. The Diamond Tyra doesn't give 6 seconds of bond duration because that would be too much, and instead increases all released bond damage by 10%. Dark and Blood Shaman armor sets were removed because they were outdated and unnecessary, and the Harpy armor set has been changed to require shadow scales or tissue samples to be crafted. Shaman had a very weird early progression with armors, and the Harpy one being outclassed instantly by the Blood and Dark Shaman set felt pretty bad given how unique the Harpy set bonus is compared to them. Harpy talents were removed, having them drop only after defeating the Eye of Tulu was a very bad attempt at making the Harpy set not overlap the Tyras as a pre-boss set and was very unintuitive anyways. The Feather Scepter has been slightly tweaked too, only requiring one active bond instead of three to shoot multiple projectiles and has a smoother animation. Last but not least, the Depth Waver set bonus was changed. It doesn't really spreading fire anymore when a fire bond is active and instead gives a 10% shamanic damage bonus. The damage retaliation when an earth bond is active remains however, and I improve its visuals a little. This reduces projectile blood and helps it feel more like a pre-hard mod set. Thanks a lot for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. Consider subscribing and liking the video if you want to support the channel. Orchid is still not available for 1.4.4, but I'd love doing more devlogs akin to this if you guys like them.